We'll have a look at this up here. Sealed. Monopoly City. Two ninety-nine. How about that? Ian, the master of pieces, part-time eBay reseller here, and look, I know I said I wouldn't go to any charity shops today, but couldn't resist. So we got a busy episode. I'm going to show you what I picked up in those charity shops. I've got an awesome Facebook marketplace pickup to make as well. And then we're going to go up and visit Jamie from Sully's Vintage. He's opened his new shop. I want to go and check it out, see how he's getting on. And then we'll finish off with a few eBay sales. Right, let's get around those charity shops. Check this out. Now, I remember somebody commenting on this gorilla ages ago in one of my videos. And it's the type of thing you would just leave by. And he's been sat in the window there, just peering out. Daddy, this is a this. Magogo gorilla. Put batteries in him, don't know what he does, he might sing, might dance. But these actually do really, really well. But check what I find. And tucked on the shelf here, yeah, look, we've got a 2018 Polly Pocket. Sounds like there's something in there. Let's have a look. A oh, little bit of cash money, but no figures though. So now we'll, we won't leave that one. And then these caught my eye as well, look. You've got little Disney animator cottages. They haven't got any of the accessories. They do look pretty cool, but looking at solds, they don't seem to go very well at all. And just poking out the toy bin, pound each, and got Stephanie of Lazy Town. Now on her own, she's not actually worth that much, but if you can find the other character, they bundle together pretty well, but I'm not seeing him. I'm not seeing him. Can't seem to escape this game at the minute. Game of Nations. It's almost like everyone's bought it, realises no good, and dumping it back in the shops. And look what we've got up here, a pair of foot joy. Golf shoes. Look in decent condition. How much are they? Daddy. $4.99. Let's go for them. Check out this pair of shoes here. Look at that. And they buy block and block make ballet shoes. Ballet shoes. They're UK size seven. UK size seven. Five quid. Five straight. Let's get them. Seven. Check this out. We got some old corgi HGVs. Now when it comes to these HGVs, this is what I look for: super haulers. But five quid each. Five quid, rip box. That ah, will be leaving them. This is pretty cool. Look, it's Carlito from WWE. Twenty quid though. Check this out up here. Look, Sony Video Eight Handycam. And the sticker there says four quid. Is that look? It's got a plug. I've never sold video cameras before. I don't know if it's all there. It looks decent, looks decent condition. Four quid. What am I missing here? Because this shop is so expensive. Why is that only four quid? Well, let's get it and see. Let's get it and see. And on the off chance, I've just had to flick through some of these jeans and we have got a pair of Tommy jeans. 34.30, six quid. Another pair of hill figure jeans. Get them as well. Another pair of Tommy jeans. Get them as well. And they've got some diesel jeans. You see all the guys sell diesel jeans. I've never sold them before. I've never come across a pair before. Six quid. Oh, let's get them. Let's get them. And in the diesel jeans, here's the little tag here. They're wakey jeans, regular straight. Check out some of these footy boots down here. Pair of Nike Tempos. Pair of Nike Mercurials. And these are called Adidas Ace. Now all of them are seven quid each. And looking at solds, those two are a bit basic. They're UK size eight. But these Adidas Ace ones, they should go for about 30 quid plus postage. So that's very worthwhile getting. Actually, 
these tempos, these are called Legend 7s. Some of the souls on these are pretty crazy. So we're going to get them. Actually, it's seven quid. I'm just going to pick these up as well, you know. I'm not going to lose many on them, am I? And it gives me a chance to do a bit more research on, on them as well. And as we leave the shop, I've seen that in the window. That's a for real friend's bear. His name's Cubby. 15 quid on the tag. That's not actually too bad, but he doesn't look to have any of his accessories. So I'm going to leave him and we're going to head across the road. Grab a coffee. Right, so we've just driven five minutes north of Cardiff to a place called Tafswell because we're going to visit Jamie who runs Sully's Vintage. Now, I've met up with Jamie a few times at the car boot sales. He's always rummaging around the clothes bags, going through the rails. And what he does is he resells it either on Depop or through Instagram. But recently, he's opened his own shop. You can see it just there in the background. Let's pop in, let's catch up with him, see how he's getting on. The flags are waving. You must have known that I was coming up. <laughs> We got the five pound rail outside. Check out the branding too. This is looking really good. And here we are, Hi Sully's guys. Vintage. Hello. Here he is, Jamie. What's happening? Good mate, doing well. Awesome, mate. Look at your shop. Hey, it is looking cool, Proper isn't cool. it? Loads of clothes. Jeez, you're not kidding. Resell. Whenever I messaged you right and said, look, I'm going to come up and have a look at the clothes, and you said you had tens, yeah. you were not... There's an item in here, to be honest. It's like a walking it. eBay store. It's like a walking eBay store, it is for sure. Look at that down there. Some of these t-shirts are brilliant. Bart Simpson on the counter. Look at that Donkey Kong there. Original Donkey Kong, original Patterson. Oh, grail yeah. wall, the grail wall. This is the grail wall, is it? Take us through the grail wall. So we've got um, a 96, 98 Newcastle goalie ship, brown ale. That's amazing. Very rare. We've got a 2002 Oasis heathen canistry. 1992 Itchy and Scratchy, very rare. Um, what's this? 2002 Licensed to Blue Grape Evil Dead promo. And then two dead stock Picasso t shirts from 95. Amazing. The grail cool. wall. The grail wall. The grail wall. wall. Guys, this is Jamie, store owner of Sully's Vintage. Hello, everyone. Jamie, tell us about the shop. Yeah, um, I opened 11th of June. I've been selling online for about, since properly last September. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to open a shop because I live around here and wanted to just make it as cheap as possible for everyone down here. So whether you want to buy stuff for yourself, buy it, sell online, just get it all really cheap in here. All good brands, good vintage. So Sweet, everyone man. can experience it. No, definitely. Well, I've, I've, I've come up here to have a look because I'm keen to buy a couple of t-shirts. So yeah, is it all right if you take us around the shop? Of course, yeah. Sweet. So, so we've got, I've had to get another sweatshirt railing because I've got over 200 already on the rail. Look at all these. All from small to 3, 4 XL. So we've got like designers, we've got Burberry's, and then we've got like, Modern clothes as well. Look at that's nice. Old clothes, 80s Puma. 91 Super Bowl. Sick. Stuff you wouldn't see anymore. And then you've got all like unbranded sweatshirts. Look at animals on. Yeah, yeah. Loads of brand stuff. Then we go to. So this is the other sweatshirt rail. Other sweatshirt rail here. Look so at we've that. Got, this has just been put out. So it's all like. Early 2000s, 90s brands, Umbro, Bush Gardens, loads of sick stuff. Awesome. Diesel, it's sick. Pembrokeshire Coast National Park. Check that out. Can't get that anywhere. <laughs> and then we've got hoodies, branded hoodies. We've got brands like Champion College ones, Umbro, Nike Zip Ups, do the best in store. Champion, Diodora, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And then we've got another hoodies rail and another sweatshirt rail. Amazing. It's all like pan collar sweats, all nature, old school brands, football sweatshirts. Yeah, just some real good quality brands, all different sizes, all different patterns. Pretty much all styles of sweatshirt, crew neck collars, v necks. Love it. Then over to the other side of the shop, <laughs> we've got t shirts, vests. So it goes from small to medium, and then this is large to 4XL. Large to 4XL at it's the top. It's all colour coded. Daddy, daddy. So we've got like daddy, daddy. nature tees. Look at that. Then we've got Harley tees. Look at that. Just a great collection of all different types of things in there. Yeah, loads of, and 
gets restocked every day. 60, 70 items Look a day restocked. Into. Yeah, this one's sick. It's a brush of Dortmund one. It's got him on the back as well. <laughs> so sick. That is. And we've got all like really old t shirts as well. It's got like a 91 3D emblem Harley cut off. Look at that. So sick. Got, Amazing. Um, 96 Michael Jackson. Jeez. So cool. <laughs> and then like unbranded stuff, my favourite category, like stained glass window. Line. Love that. Got 89 Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. So it's a bit of everything. T-shirts range from £5 on the £5 rail, £10, and that's loads of collection. Yeah, so so Jim, what 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 like I'm kind of seeing here is everything is priced yeah. as if it is you can come in here shop and get some absolute bargains. But if you're yeah. a reseller, it, it you get it, stuff too. It, yeah, it feels like this is quite cheap, and there would still yeah. be some meat on the bone. So I price price. based on if something's twenty five pound, thirty pound on eBay sold, I usually price it around ten fifteen to just give someone else to double their money yeah. or give someone a really good deal if they're buying for personal. So the best deals are on the five pound row, which is outside. But I'm gonna show you the jeans first. Let's go through the jeans. So we've got loads of 501s, 511s for 15 pound. All the jeans are 15 pound and there's their special like old 90s Levi cords. Jeepers. But we've got loads of colors, nice light washes, you really distressing. Every size from 28 to I think 42. 44. Nice. It's pretty much all sizes, jeans, trousers, corduroys. Look at the state of them, mate. I know, look. That's so that someone will have them, they're wicked. <laughs> look at them. That's that's proper distress. <laughs> mate, tells, you're not that wrong tells there. a story. <laughs> you know? It's all all measured. Amazing. Don't go off the tab size. Get get have a look at the Sully's vintage price tag instead. Come on, let's show us your price where tags. Where they're all measured. Use the Sully's vintage tag where they're all measured by hand by me. Nice. And price. Got a tape measure out? Yeah, always. And then over here, even more clothes I know. We've got some jackets, which couldn't fit on the jacket trail, and shirts. So we've got like funky shirts, corduroy shirts, festivals and everyday wear. Then we've got Ralph Lauren shirts for £10 and funky shirts. And then brands like Lacoste, Dolce & Gabbana, loads of high end, just £10. And shirts, Levi's, funky shirts, flannels, corduroys. Then we've got one of my favourite sections. Polo shirts and rugby shirts. So yes, let's go through all it. All the rails go from small to 3XL or more. So we've got brands like your Ralph Lauren Big Ponies for £10. Nice. And then Ralph Lauren Long Sleeves. And then like that early 90s Lonsdale. Cool. Acrylic as well. Um, really rare rugby shirts. God, Brumbies. 95 Brumbies. Extremely rare. Loads of really high end rugby shirts if that's your vibe, if you want it in here. Got um, Colour Block Rugbies. Love these, they do really well in the shop. Yeah. Else now. Oh, here we go. Dead stock with the tags, Reebok. Look at that. From the early 90s. Do you reckon you could pull that one off? Oh, I don't know, mate. <laughs> Yves Saint Laurent. Really nice colours on that. Cardiff City Polos, get loads nice, of Cardiff gear in. If I just not catch myself. 90s Cardiff RFC. For real. Ralph Rugby's. These don't hang about long. Loads of these in the shop. Then we've got. I think I've got two of these. I'll find the other one now. 90s Nike Springboks. Look at that. Rugby Oof, shirts. How long they are. They're so long. They're like XL to XL, which if you know rugby shirts, bigger the size, the better. Yeah. So we've done that section. Now we've got the women's section with some really cool, really cool clothes on here. Yeah, loads, take us through. Loads of unbranded clothes. So I like these. These go do better in the winter. So you've got like the floral nature sweats. Mm. Then we've got brands like Gap. 
Nice. Really nice colours. And then we've got so we've got your champion reverse weaves. Very set. More Ralph Rugby's women's ones. Amazing. Then we go on to jackets. My, one of my favourites we've got. That's Harley Ladder. Look at that. Look at the badges on that. Weighs about three cows. That's heavy, that. isn't it? Yeah. Three cows. <laughs> um, Dickie's Fanel jackets. These ones are cool. Straight, straight off the skateboard, is that? It's my favourite one, personally. Feel a Turinda. Straight off football fashion. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> then we're going to knit jumpers and sweater vests. Perfect got, for like 30 degree heat weather, isn't it? Nice Lacoste sweater vests. We've got loads of the Daddy. heavy Ralph nets. And then patterned ones as well. Crazy colours. Look at that. All made, like, made Italy, made in Great Britain. Loads of them. Paul and Shark cardigan. Gabici, another great brand. Stuck to the brim on the knitwear. Love it. So for those guys who aren't local to here and can't just pop in, yeah. how can they buy any of this stuff? You can buy off my Depop or my eBay. I put stuff on my Instagram story. I do this thing called they the Sully Steels. Yeah, legendary. the Sully Steel stories. Loads of people buy off there. Where I put it on my story. Basically, I put it on my story throughout the day and I let people come in. Before it goes on the shop floor, there's a rail behind my till. If you ask at the till, you can come and look through. And then on my Instagram, you can buy it before it goes on to my Depop or my eBay. Mm -hmm. And there's loads. I usually drop about 60, 70 items a day, mm -hmm. six days a week. Nice. So there's going to be, there's loads of clothes. And you can come into the shop as well if you are local. But if you're not local, make sure to check out my Depop, my eBay, Sully's Vintage. Awesome. Check it out. This is the five pound Sully Steels rail. Located outside the front of the shop, Unit 11 CF157 JD. North Face t shirts, footy shirts, Fred Perry shirts, loads of Lacoste and Ralph polos, the short sleeve ones, Nike t shirts. Then we've got like Old Guys Rule. Nice. Love the Old Guys Rule. Uh, Polo. God, you've got some really top brands on here. Loads of top brands on here, mate, yeah. And then we've got like Tommy Jeans. Keep that to one side. <laughs> if that's my size, I'm buying that. Loads of little like new age band t shirts, loads of sick like modern, all modern t shirts, some vintage, sick Nike tees. Mm. So, where'd you get it all from then, Jane? This is all from, I handpick all the items myself. N none of that buying blind or anything. I pick it all myself and my suppliers to get the best clothes possible for the shop. And then we've got like loads of sick knife tees. And then we've got, I'm trying to get to them now, I've got a little section. Yeah. Nice Ralph Strike polos. Your Berghaus tees, you for running and stuff. All on the five pound rail. NFL tees. Crazy deals. DKMY. Gant, six Oof. Gant polos. This is restocked daily as well. Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger. All sizes from extra small to 3XL. All the way through. Lacoste t-shirts. Loads of really cool stuff on here. Amazing stuff. North Face, another sick one. Well, I'm gonna go and have a flick through this myself, James, and I'm very keen to buy a couple of these t-shirts off you. And what a fantastic shop that is. I picked up a few pieces myself and it's brilliant to see Jamie doing so well. He's got some great stock in there for great prices. You're supporting a local business and you're backing your fellow reseller as well. So fair play. It's good for the environment as well as good for your pocket too. Who remembers buying stuff off Facebook Marketplace to resell on eBay for profit? Now don't get me wrong, I used to do this all the time. But at the minute, I'm finding stuff is either priced really, really high, or if you're not on that listing within 10 seconds, it is gone. So at the minute, I don't really bother looking, but on the off chance, I did find a really nice bundle the other day. I was just glancing through, and this bundle was almost too good to be true. 
But then you find you've got the classic thing of a really unresponsive seller. That's why it's still there. And what we've got is a huge bundle of stuff. It was up for 70 quid, it's been listed for over a week and they've knocked it down to 65 pounds. I sent a message Monday, just the standard, is it available message that it comes up with on Marketplace? No response. Tuesday, I followed it up with a bit more of a personal message. Hi, really interested in your listing, would love to come round. Um, I live really close by so I could pop around anytime. Let me know. Still nothing. Wednesday, I actually used the offer tool and I've never done that before. I sent an offer of the exact price they're asking for. Nothing. And on the off chance on Thursday, I just thought, let's just resend that. Is it still available message again? So that's four messages. And then five minutes, I had this magical word appear on my phone saying yes. And then from there, started a dialogue going and now I'm here ready to pick up this bundle. And here's what I picked up, an absolute ton of Lego. And I mean, it is an absolute ton. All of it is bagged up into individual sets. We've got loads of instructions here um, to go through. And then just a big bag full of bits and pieces as well. Now, all in all, from the sets that I've identified here, there is about 700 pounds worth of Lego plus postage on top of that. So take off eBay fees, what's that going to be? 100 odd quid or so, maybe just a bit more. Take off the 65 pounds I spent. Assume it's going to be 30 to 40 pounds of missing pieces I've got to source as well to complete these sets. You're not far off 500 pounds worth profit here. But look, this is a real labor of love. You've got to enjoy doing this because it is going to take a long while to sort. And actually, this is how I did get into reselling right at the start. I used to buy secondhand Lego sets complete them or or do them, work out which bits were missing and then source those missing pieces off of Bricklink and then sell them back on to eBay. Never really did it to make any money. I did it just because I like the feeling of completing the set, knowing that that set is now finished. And also I just love doing Lego as well. So this is how I've worked out what I've got here. Having these instructions is an absolute godsend because what you can do is look and see in these bags what typical pieces would match those instruction sets. So here's a good example here. Look at this one here. First of all, you've got a big bag of Lego, so you know it's gonna be a big size, lots of reds, lots of white pieces. They're also looking for unique pieces. See that up there? There's like a pair of curtains. So flicking through the Lego instructions, it's gonna be that set there, isn't it? Let's go through some more. This one here, lots of purples, a few Technic bricks in there as well. That is gonna match up with something which has got some suspension. I can flick through here, have a look, and look, you've got a few Technic bits in there. That one goes with that one. And some of them are a bit easier. Look at that one there. You can look at the stickers. So obviously it says ambulance. And if there's any unique pieces again, look, there's a green bike in there. It's gonna go with this set as well, isn't it? So that is how I've identified all of these ones with yellow stickers on. Those are the ones that I can match with instructions. Now this is where it gets a lot more tricky. The ones with the blue stickers on, these don't have instructions, but you can still use the same method to try and find out what the sets are, but you've got to do a lot more Googling. Now what I can see already is there are a lot of Lego City sets here, so chances are a lot of these are from Lego City as well. And what I know from previous experience is usually yellow ones, they're construction vehicles, red ones are fire vehicles, blue ones are police vehicles, so that can be a starting point. So going through these construction ones here, look, Already I'm looking in the bag for unique pieces and you've got those big circular drums. So I can Google just construction sets, Lego construction sets and scroll down to see when I find that particular set. And I come up with that one. This one, a little bit more obvious. That to me looks like the back of an aeroplane and you've got the front of an aeroplane and in this bag here we've got the big aeroplane wings. That enabled me to identify that set. Sets like this one though, I'm having a closer look and I'm having a look at some of the minifigures in there. Off of Toy Story there, you've also got Buzz Lightyear tucked away at the top there. And then I also found this little bag of bits and pieces and in there was a little Pizza Planet sticker. So I was able to identify that set. This was a good one, look. 
I've got the brown horse. That's all I've got to go off on there. But I know that there are some wheels in there. That piece there looks like a horse box. So I'm looking for a set with a horse box. Lots of black pieces. That's probably the car. That's why I come up with that set there. And I could follow that method and I've identified all of the ones in here. Another great set here. You can see just in this bag there, I dug out these two green kind of bins or skips. So I know that this set is in here somewhere. And I found just this generic bag of green bits with wheels. So I'm assuming that goes with that one. But then in this bag, these are the sets that I don't know what they are. There's just a lot of generic colors, mixed colors. There's wheels in there, so it implies it is some kind of truck, something like that. That's gonna be some sort of police bike, maybe, or little police car. There is a, was a little sticker, so perhaps I could just Google that set there and see what it is. But what you could find is some of these bags actually might be for these sets here. If they couldn't fit all of the bits in one bag, they might have just spilled into other bags. I don't know. But this here could be brand new sets that I haven't included in my kind of total. So this could be even more money in here. That's a police bike in there, gotta be. Now what the hardcore resellers will do is they will look at the parts list for those sets and they'll go through and they'll count every piece. And then once they've done that and found the missing pieces, they'll go on BrickLink, source them, and then they might build them and then they might list them. For me, that's really, really boring. What I like to do is actually do them first, like this, work out the missing pieces that way, and then I can go on BrickLink. At least I'm getting a little bit of fun out of them before that just grind of going through and sourcing those missing bits. And these are the sets I've built so far. I've got nine of them made up and all of them do have small little bits missing. Look at this little SpongeBob set here. That's worth about 20 quid plus postage. Does have one of his little missiles missing and like a, um, a red bit there. This bin lorry I absolutely love. This one is complete, but they've used the wrong colored pieces. You can see that should be a dark green piece. This one is missing his little fishing rod. This one's missing some off of his kind of petrol pump. They've all just got tiny little bits missing. Some of them have got like the minifigures missing. So yeah, it is gonna take a while. Don't get me wrong, you've gotta love this. And it is gonna take a long time to complete all these sets. But for the profit you get out of it, it's totally worth it. But really, right? There's no real rush to sell any of this Lego. It's not as if it's gonna lose value. This type of thing actually will probably gain value over time. So what I will do is I'll just be chugging away and chipping away with these in the background and I might list a few up whenever say the charity shop hauls are a bit slow or the boot sales a bit slow. You know, perhaps when the boot sales finish and we're coming up to the run up to Christmas, I could spend more time looking at these and listing this type of thing up ready for Christmas is when I'm gonna get the most money for them. Thing is though, I'm gonna really struggle to part with these. I do just enjoy building Lego sets and these Lego cities are probably my favorite ones to build and they're such a mixture. They're going to look great up on the shelf. So I will probably end up just doing one big display of them. Oh, I might part with them maybe in the future, a long time in the future, who knows. Right, let's run through what's been selling on eBay Monday and Tuesday. First sale was, there it is. I sold a couple of coins from this coin collection here. You've got the Gringotts Savings Book. Now, back when the first Harry Potter film came out, The Philosopher's Stone, Asda released this coin collection, and the aim, obviously, is to try and get all 24 coins. You can imagine any collectors out there, they're going to be paying top dollar to buy individual coins so they can complete their own collection if they never got to do it the first time round. So this is my personal collection. I got this off Connor, the Welsh poker picker, but I do have a few doubles and that's what I'm selling off. And I sold these doubles here. What we've got is Harry Potter on his broomstick playing Quidditch. And you've also got the Slytherin crest here. And all they've got on the back is the Harry Potter Philosopher's Stone logo. Now those two coins, right? They've gone for nine quid all in. Nine quid for two coins. Now, I do want to complete this set. It's just a nice thing to do, isn't it? And I'm, I'm four or five coins short, but I'm not going to be buying them individually for that amount. I prefer to do this by finding them in the charity shops or the boot sales. I mean, well, that, that's if I don't sell them off individually first. If they're, if they're going for four or five quid a coin, that's 80 quid's worth of coins there. Harry Potter coins. Mad. 
Right, this next sale. I bought this at the boot sale on Sunday. Monopoly Toy Story. I paid a pound fifty. The seller said it was all complete. I opened the box and it did look pretty new in there. And lo and behold, it is all complete, which is great. Now that has sold for ten pounds plus postage, and I took an offer on that. The going rate for this version of Monopoly is about 11, 12 quid plus postage, so I'm there and thereabouts. But it sold really, really quick. And look, I could have maybe held out and got a couple more quid, but you don't know how how long I would have to wait for that because there are a fair few of these listed up. It's come in, listed, sold pretty quick. That's the aim, right? Three pairs of shoes to show you now. Check these. Pair of Puma Descendant V2s. UK size 7, and I was charging top price, top pre-owned price for these because they are in really nice condition. Now these sold for just under 30 quid all in. Nice sale. These ones not so good condition. I paid three pounds for these at the charity shop. You've got a pair of UK size four Adidas Predators, laceless, and they are AstroTech. But look, someone's put them through the ringer. These, these have seen a lot of games. They sold for 15 quid all in, even with that wear there. So not too bad from a three pound purchase. This next pair of shoes. Yeah. And no, they're good, right? Birkenstock, keep an eye out for Birkenstock. Thing is, right, I can't believe there's such a second-hand market for pre-owned sandals. I can see shoes, right, I can see shoes, but someone's sm sweaty, smelly feet has been in that. I think these are massive as well, look. These are massive, size UK 11 and a half. The thing is, right, like I said, Birkenstock, great brand. These shoes, these are called Arizonas. Even with that damage on the front there, I've gone for £22.50 plus postage. And these sold within a couple of days. I bought a couple of pairs of flip-flops. For a fiver so a nice bit of profit i mean if these were in good pre-owned condition yeah you're looking what 35 quid something like that i no, i'm putting them down i mean not for me not for me the money's for me but that's not for me right more conventional sale and this is the third time i've sold this not this particular one but i always keep an eye out for this go jet spaceship i only covered this a couple of videos actually ago now, I found another one for two quid. This one, oh, doesn't have any figures with it. It's missing a few of the ladders in there. Put batteries in it, tested them working. That's gone for 15 quid plus postage for that one. So keep an eye out for it. Go jet a spaceship. This one, it's always nice when this happens. I had a sale come in and just didn't even realise I had it. I didn't even know. I didn't even know. Well, I didn't know what it was until I read it on the listing. And then I, God knows, it took me ages to find it in here. But what we've got is a Kinder Turtle plush sold for 10 quid as well all in so yeah nice little surprise two more sales to go check this trackmaster clean this is a trackmaster revolution it's got the spikes on the bottom tested working paid two pounds of the boot sale bundled in a couple of red carriages because the color scheme matched they've gone for 10 quid plus postage and the final sale this is probably the most surprising sale for me right was i bought those 11 lilliput lanes for 20 quid I got round to listing two, so I bought them Sunday, listed these at Monday night. They'd sold by Tuesday morning. I couldn't believe how popular these are. And it's because I think I've got the box and it's because I've got the deeds. There are lots of these listed up on eBay, but without the box and deeds, they don't really sell for much. Now, these have gone to the same person on Global Shipping for £21 all in. So that's three quarters of, of my um, investment back, and I'm really pleased with that. Because when I was looking at sold listings, without the box, I was thinking, oh, these might only be worth a couple of quid each. It might, might have been a bit of a slog. So that, that I'm going to put that as sale of, sale of Monday and Tuesday. Just, yeah, brilliant. Really tough with those. So there we have it, guys. Nice number of sales. And yeah, nine or ten items to pack, so not too bad. So guys, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll catch up with you in the next one. Probably a car boot haul on Sunday. See you there.